we are going to start back up with the workshop. For those of you who just joined, you have joined the NASA Gregory G. Leptuk Second Online Giovanni Workshop. And this is your host, Jennifer Brennan. Our next speaker today is the workshop organizer, James Acker, who is a senior support scientist at the NASA Goddard Earth Sciences Data and Information Services Center, or the JESS DISC. Okay? Everyone can hear me. Um, for those of you who are having a coffee break or anticipating lunch or anticipating dinner, um, this will be a short talk. And then um, we are officially scheduled to finish up in about half an hour, but it will probably be shorter than that, at which time we'll have an hour and a half break before our first um, presentation in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. Um, anyways, um, today's um, my presentation now is entitled Research Highlights and Connecting with the Giovanni Community. Um, so I'm going to just show a, f a few things and um, some of the more fun things that, that we do here and try and keep people up to date with what's happening with Giovanni and um, how you can stay in touch um, through various ways. Of course, there's always email, as we talked about before, but I didn't put that into the presentation. But um, if you want to give us some feedback, um, you can send it to our basic GSFC, GS Disk Help Desk. Go to our homepage. You'll see it at the bottom. Um, connect on that. We have a very efficient user services system. It gets routed to the right people. So a Giovanni question or suggestion or comment will be sent to the Giovanni group. Um, you can also call us on the phone. We get that occasionally. Um, I know that's kind of antiquated, but we still have that. And then I'll get into what else you can do to specifically stay in touch with the Giovanni community. Um, first of all, um, and I'll tell you how to subscribe to the Giovanni News, we have a newsletter um, that we have been striving to give, bring out monthly. Unfortunately, um, my very able editor left a couple of months ago, and so it's been down to me to do all, and I'm not quite as fast when I have other things going on. She was very good at keeping me on schedule on my publication deadline. Um, but um, I will endeavor to put out a newsletter each month. And it's not widely publicized, but I invite um, the user community to give me something to put in a newsletter. Um, that's totally fine if somebody wants to make an image, um, talk about the image, talk about what they're doing with Giovanni, that would be welcome. So if you're listening in and you have an idea for doing something like that, feel free to mention that. Um, we'll put it in there. Um, what I did for this um, issue, I believe it was the July-August issue, was I looked at the, the again, at the publications that we'd seen, and I sort of selected things that looked a little bit more unusual. Um, so you can, and I have just a couple of them here. You can find the, the issues are all online, and you can take a look at them. So here's a couple of them. Um, we really enjoy this group um, from Spain um, because what they do is they've been looking at um, the dangers of ultraviolet exposure for various activities. Um, this was, I believe, the second one I saw from them. Another one looked at the um, potential danger to youth skiers from UV exposure. And um, anyways, so you can see that this was in photochemical and photobiological sciences, and they were looking at the personal exposure, UV exposure for different outdoor sports. And the sports considered in this particular study were hiking, um, long distance running, and tennis. And um, they did discover that um, the runners got the most exposure, though the hikers um, were potentially out in the sun longer. But the runners tended to work out and be exposed on better days, not as cloudy, things like that. Anyways, the, I did a little bit of walking around to see where this group was, uh, had organized. And um, this particular arch, stone arch, is near the area that they, um, that they are located. So anyways, there, it's, a, it's not something I would expect, um, but it's obviously um, ozone in the stratosphere is what blocks ultra, ultraviolet light. And so we have data products that are specifically um, dedicated to the amount of UV that um, is exposed, the amount of UV to which the human skin is exposed. And so that's what they use it for. Um, this was a particular type of dust storm, and it caught, caught my eye. Um, we, um, Dr. Kaskoudis, as I note, is presenting a poster. Um, he's been a, um, a user of Giovanni for several years, looking at aerosols over India and 
Um, he's originally from Greece, so also looking at um, dust over Greece. Um, this one was just one that um, caught my eye because of the interplay between dust and um, iron fertilization. I also noticed that this was over the Arabian Sea. One of our speakers will be talking about um, a bloom in the, in the um, Gulf of Oman later on. And so it caught my eye that this was extremely high aerosol loading. And I also just um, was interested in that, that this was a particular type of a dust storm given a name called the Sistan. And the Sistan is actually quite common. Um, we've had some inquiries um, about um, surface temperature from MODIS. And it just so happens that this was a um, Earth Observatory image that I found that showed a um, MODIS surface temperature image of a Sistan dust storm. Um, and you can see you can see borders. I believe this is, I believe, um, let me point for a second. Um, we don't really have ocean, but I believe that this is the Arabian Sea down here. Um, so I can be corrected if anybody wants to suggest that. So. And then this was one that um, really caught my eye. Um, it's not the first time that we have seen um, aerosol data and other types of data in Giovanni used for earthquake prediction. I wouldn't say actual prediction, but actually looking at potential precursory signals of earthquakes. And this one caught my eye because it looked like it was actually um, a remarkably good signal um, of before the um, Wenchuan earthquake in, excuse me for the pronunciation, but in 2008. Um, it was a really strong earthquake. It um, was notable for endangering the habitat of the wild panda in China. And what you can see from this study was the fact that they were looking at aerosols um, from a variety of sources. They were using, um, in, in part of what they were doing was using MODIS data and Giovanni. And you can see this is the fault line, the area of greatest shaking. The epicenter is right here. And it was a very small black dot you can see right here. And that when they looked at various types of aerosols and distinguished them, this is the eight-day aerosol average, made 1, 2, 12. And you can really see that the higher aerosols were right along this fault line. Um, the paper goes into the potential explanations for why that would be. Um, but I just found it really remarkable that um, maybe we should be looking at aerosols very closely in uh, earthquake-prone reasons to see if there's any sudden increase. Um, and this might be a um, potential indicator of an oncoming earthquake. So I just thought that was quite interesting. OK, and just for fun, every month I look at the listing that I get of um, papers that are coming off. Um, so this is a paper talking about um, incoming sunshine again, looking at six decades of total solar shortwave irradiation in the Iberian Peninsula. If you don't know where that is, that's also known as Spain and Portugal, and probably part of the Pyrenees in France as well. Um, anyways, so this just came out in atmospheric environment. I'm a second paper looking at um, dust transported from China, the Gobi Desert, various other deserts, across the Pacific to the west coast of the United States. What I really found neat about this was back when CWIS was first launched, we looked at some dust storms um, that came from China and went all the way across the Pacific Ocean. So this is a climatology of that particular kind of event using um, Giovanni, among other things. And um, it always seems to make the news when one of these really big dust storms crosses the entire Pacific Ocean and gets, make, affects the air quality and the um, atmospheric visibility in places like California and the Grand Canyon, even. OK. Antarctica has been in the news. Um, this particular paper is looking at the distribution of both alkalinity and the pH of the Ross Sea in uh, big embayment in the uh, in Antarctic continent. And this was taking place in um, the summer of 2008. And finally, looking at um, inter-island influences on rainfall. Um, if you know the Mediterranean, you know that two of the large islands to the west of Italy are Sardinia and Corsica. And so this is looking at the influence of the island of Sardinia on rainfall on Corsica. So I thought that was a nice little local study. And um, I didn't read it closely, so I'd like to go back and take a closer look. Anyway, I just thought these four were really nice cross-section of the types of things that um, Giovanni can be involved in. Um, and so I invite you, you can look at the list. Um, and all of the 
publications that I've found are online. I shouldn't say they're all online. The, all the titles are online, and you can see, if you want to, all the various different publications that have come out. OK, now, how can we connect with the Giovanni community? How can you connect with the Giovanni community? Um, there's a couple different ways that, that we can do that. Uh, by the way, this is a background picture of a Cocolitha 4 bloom that I just thought was quite pretty. And it's, you, you can see Cocolitha 4s with Giovanni in some of our ocean colored products. The first thing I mentioned is the Giovanni News. I'll leave this up here for a minute. Um, it's very simple to subscribe to the Giovanni News. It's um, sent out via listserv. If you subscribe, you will get it a few days before I put it online. And so if you're out there, you can write down, if you're not already subscribed, um, you just send a message to the Giovanni News subscription list. This information is also available on the newsletter page. Um, or you can just send me an email, um, james.g.acker at nasa.gov. And I will subscribe you, and you'll get a message that you're subscribed. So um, it's quite simple. I try to keep it interesting. If there's, if you, in addition to potentially writing something or submitting something to me, if you have something you would like me to write about or go into about Giovanni, I'd be glad to do that. So just send me a suggestion. Okay. And second way that you can follow us um, is literally by following us on Twitter. We have a Giovanni account. Um, we currently have a little over 1,500 followers on Twitter. It's simply NASA underscore Giovanni. And um, I try and keep up to date. I try and put out um, anything that's been happening in the community, new news, data sets um, that are in Giovanni. And we also have over, we just went over 5,000 followers on our NASA GS disk account, which um, is used to retweet news from Giovanni, so you can see them that way as well. And Jennifer Brennan is um, in charge of the NASA Earth Data Twitter feed, um, Twitter handle. And um, she will feature news from us and from all of the various NASA data centers. So it's um, also a good one to follow. And you probably know that there are other NASA missions. There's a GPM, which I think is NASA RAIN. GPM is one of our new data sets. Um, so that is one of the ways that you can uh, one of the other ways you connect us. Um, we don't have a Facebook. Uh, we, we had one a while ago. We had one two years ago, but we decided we weren't getting enough um, information there, and there were some restrictions on how it could be used. And um, we don't have one, but I believe that um, NASA Earth Data does have one. And if you have any questions, you can you can ask Jennifer about that. Okay, and just here. Some of the other things that we use um, and are interacting with um, that might be of interest to our community, whether or not you're still aware of them, one is our homepage, um, where Giovanni can be found, where our other data services can be found, um, where news about Giovanni and some of the other data sets that we have are found, and that's the NASA Goddard Earth Sciences Data and Information Services Center website. And as I said, if you go there, that's the easiest way to find our help desk um, contact note, contact email, or our phone number. And um, you can then give us some suggestions. The um, Earth Data website is earthdata.nasa.gov. It has a really neat tool for making some images of some of the real-time data called um, WorldView. Um, and I always make sure, I believe it's, one is EarthView, and I think NOAA has WorldView or, or the other way around. Anyway, it's easy to find. Um, you can look at data from MODIS, from AIRS. Um, I'm not sure if it has trim. I might have GPM. Not but you can check and see what data sets are available. You can make some really nice true color overlays, um, and it's a lot of fun. And then there's a lot information from news from all the DACs. Um, when I say DAC, that's the Distributed Active Archive Center. The GES disk is one of the NASA DACs, as is the PODAC and um, NSIDC. NAS the, the, the National Snow and Ice Data Center also has a NASA DAC. Um, LANCE um, used to be called LANCE, and you can still find it by Google searching on LANCE. But Lance provides real time, near real time data. Um, one of our users was asking about hurricanes. Okay, but this would be the place to go for um, the most updated um, data as soon as it can be, as soon as it's processed and released. Um, not even in science form, but the, the quick release type data products. And actually, I have it there. It was WorldView for um, EOSTIS. Um, it's in their labs section, and um, it's fun to play with. Um, there's some 
you can see dust storms, you can see hurricanes, you can see rainfall events, temperatures. So um, anyways, those are the things that we have that, that I recommend taking a look at. And that actually is my last slide. So um, I can entertain questions for a minute and um, take it from there. OK, are there any questions? Anybody have any questions for Jim? Oh, by the way, I, one, one comment just about the, uh, the uh, workshop itself. Um, I sent Jennifer the URL for the um, poster session, and the posters will be available for public perusal on Thursday before you can ask questions on Friday. And she'll have that information up. Or you can email me, and I will um, send out the addresses. To the break slide. No, not a problem. OK, does anybody have any questions? If there are not any questions, what we will do now is we will actually move to the lunch break for those of us on the uh, okay on the East Coast East about Coast emailing Coast. the URLs. Yes, I can actually send all participants um, and guests for which I have your information the URL out. I could absolutely do that. Okay, like so we'll me. actually move to a lunch break. And uh, the lunch break, if I'm not mistaken, today is going to be an hour and a half. Starting at 11.30. Starting at 11.30, right. So we're a little bit early. Um, during the lunch break, I just wanted to let everybody 